Detroit Burbank Tower, Burbank Hill, 2 to 3 0 one Burbank Class Charlie. Surface area is IFR, stay in tension. Okay, from Karen, uh, maintain uh, special DFR action for special DFR transition on the 101 Westbound 2. Mm -hmm. November 2, Echo X ray, hold outside Burbank Class Charlie airspace. I have an aircraft going around. 2 Echo X ray, hold it. Okay, it's going to be a little bit. I got a citation on a nine or mile final, and then that go around that I just had is going to be turning uh, base to final in about three minutes. Okay, we'll continue holding to Echo X ray. November 2 Echo X ray, and for your planning purposes, you can expect to transition to the north side of the airport. I just spoke with Van Eyes on the line, and they've got multiple IFR departures coming off of runway 16. So you can expect to follow the 5 north and cross that way. Two echo X-ray, no problem. 317 pop-up Burbank Tower. You can expect a few minutes. I got a uh, special VFR helicopter I need to get transitioning. He's been holding for about 15 minutes. South, uh, northwest, follow the 5 freeway, maintain special VFR, correction, special VFR condition. At or below 2,500. Maintain special VFR at or below 2,500 I-5 northbound to Echo X-ray. Number 2 Echo X-ray, roger, and you're cleared through Burbank Class Charlie surface area from the southeast to the northwest. Copy that, we'll maintain special VFR, copter to Echo X-ray. X-ray for your transition to Camarillo, did you just want to follow the 118? 118, and then we'll look around Van Eyes to catch the 101 to Echo X-ray. Number 2 Echo X-ray, roger. Number two, Echo X-ray, continue following the five northwestbound to join the 118, and then uh, Van Nuys will work you through. Radar service is terminated. Remain that squawk. Contact Van Nuys helicopters, 119.0. Two Echo X-ray, switch you to Van Nuys. Van Nuys helicopter, two Echo X-ray with you for the special VFR transition. We are currently at 1400. Helicopter seven, two Echo X-ray, Van Nuys tower. Wind calm, visibility 2 and 1 half, ceiling 1,100 overcast, Van Nuys altimeter 3016. Cleared into Van Nuys class delta, northeast of Van Nuys along the 118 freeway westbound. Advise when you're in VFR conditions or when you're clear of the Van Nuys class delta. Transition at or below 2,500 permitting. 2 Echo X-ray, advise in VFR condition uh, and then we stay on the uh, 118, so we're currently at 1400, and we have 0235. Helicopter 2, Echo X-ray, thank you. And once you clear Van Nuys Delta, did you want to talk to SoCal? Hey, from it up, 2, Echo X-ray. Tower for 2, Echo X-ray, can we start, go ahead and start turning to the uh, southwest close to 1 1? Helicopter 2, Echo X-ray, approved, and are you transitioning in VFR condition? VFR condition 1,500, 2 Echo X-ray. Helicopter 2 Echo X-ray, thank you. Contact SoCal now, 134.2 for flight falling, 342. 342. X-ray ident. So X-ray, yeah, you're uh, on a 1,200 code. Uh, are you requesting flight following? Two Echo X-ray, what do you say intention? Two Echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. Two Echo X-ray, SoCal. Incredible. Just incredible, you know, as we sit here thinking about the loss of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, the other people in the helicopter. And I hope what I say brings you some peace and we look at uh, why these things happen and, and what does God want us to learn out of all this. Kobe Bryant, man, he was an icon of Southern California, you know, very well loved. We love that guy. And it's incredible how we could sit here. Most of us have never met the guy, and we love him. Uh, tears, watery eyes, you know. Um, why do these things happen? And we want to, you know, just take a second just to um, 
look at this, make sense of it, and know what does the Bible and what does God say about these times, you know, because uh, God wants to be the comforter in these times and, and, and to help us understand, like, what's going on. You know, Kobe Bryant, Laker legend. I'm, I'm a Laker fan diehard, you know. Um, it hurts me. It's sad. And I'm blown away sitting here all day. I found out at church and just all day, everywhere I went, everyone's talking about it everywhere, a restaurant, coming home and, and just sitting there and my eyes just watered, but, uh, I wanna, you know, play the macho role, you know, but what's important right now, we're, we're hurting, we're all grieving. Um, and, and we grieve also for the mom, Kobe's wife, that has to go through this, not only losing her husband, but her her daughter, you know, and and Kobe's daughters, the other da the other daughters that remain, you know, it's just incredible what they're going to go through. But not only them, the other family members inside the helicopter, the pilot, and everyone else, and you know, you know, Kobe was doing great things for the WNBA. He was he was just, uh, you know, really investing in his daughter, you know, and 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 that's what it was about for him. So. What do we learn from all this? What does God want us to learn from all this? Well, we know I want to be very direct and humble, and but very direct. And um, we do have an appointed day that we're going to die. You know, the Bible says that. It's appointed a man once to die and then the judgment. You know, we die and we're going to stand before and give an account of our life that's going to happen. And, you know, unfortunately in our eyes, that's what happened with, uh, with Kobe, his daughter, the rest of the family, they stood before God and, and, and they gave an account for their life, you know? And so what God wants us to learn is that, um, there's a day coming, there's a day coming when it's going to be time to click our ticket and we're going to punch out of this life and we're going to stand before him. And what does God want us to learn through this? That, that he loves us, that he wants us to be near to him, that he wants a relationship with us. He's not a God. He's not a God that's far off. He's a God that's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's everywhere not pantheism he's everywhere in the sense he's everywhere he's almighty he's loving and he sent his only begotten son to pay the price for our sins for you for you to stand before god you got to be holy and none of us are holy we're all sinners but when you accept christ in your life it's like putting on a coat you put on christ and when you stand before the Lord, he sees you as blameless because you received his son. You see, that's what God wants us to learn through all this. So probably everyone in this, everyone listening to this probably never met Kobe or maybe did just shake his hand, took a picture. Um, you know, we look, we look up, he was an icon, you know, and we respect him and we're crying and we're hurt but we don't even really know him like his wife and his daughters know him. And how much more should we have that love for Jesus Christ? You know, Jesus Christ paid for our sins, you know? So there's nothing wrong with loving Kobe, loving our fellow man. You know, as long as we don't idolize the guy, we could appreciate all he done, but even more so our love should be even more for Jesus and appreciation for what he did. And in times like this, God wants to show himself that he should reign supreme in our hearts. That love we have for Kobe should be so much greater for God. And I say that because um, I think sometimes we're off balance. We're off balance in these times. We put these celebrities and, and all these things in our life. It could be our job. It, it could be concerts. It could be rock bands. It could be rap bands could be country bands, you know, country groups. It, it could be our wives. It could be a girlfriend. We put everything above the Lord. So what God would want us to, to know 
is that uh, he desires a personal relationship with, with you. He wants to be in your life. He wants to walk alongside and help you. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be a time. The Bible says it's appointed once to die and then the judgment. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You know, today, are you ready? Are you ready to receive the Lord into your heart? You know, is he reigning supreme in your heart? Because if he's not, when you stand before a holy God, what are you going to say? In whose presence we would melt? You know, people in the Bible, when they would see angels, would fall and just and tremble and fear. So how much more for a holy God? And we stand before him and have to give an account. So God desires to be more than what he is now in our hearts. And I speak for myself too. I'm not pointing at no fingers. He He desires to be so much more. He desires, and he's, he's a God. He's a personal God. He's not a God just when you pass by the church, you do the sign of the cross. He's not a God when you receive an award at the Oscars or the Grammys, you say, uh, you know, thank you, God. He wants to be in every moment, every part of your life, walking with you, guiding you, and guiding you when that day comes, when you take your last breath, that he wants you to have your first breath in heaven. Because there is somewhere else we'll, where people will go who did not receive him. You know, so Kobe Bryant, man, I, I am so appreciative for all these years being a Laker fan. He he did such a great job. You know, he wasn't perfect. I know that. Um, what a great player he was. We hurt today. We mourn. And um, at the same time, man, we should be having that greater love for the Lord. You know, appreciate that, uh, you know, God... God's the one who put Kobe in and, and, and gave him the skills and all that. And, and Kobe excelled on it and he excelled in life. And we could have pleasure in these things in basketball and theater and arts and movies, you know. But God didn't, make, didn't put those things there to be an idol. He put them there for us to enjoy. That we would look at, you know, that just somebody with great talent like Kobe and go, wow, God-given God -given gifts. And we would give God the glory, you know. So I think what the Lord would have us to learn from this is that our time's coming also, that God should be reigning on the throne and that God is good. God is good through tragedy, through everything. And today I want, want to ask two things before you before we go. We're trying to make sense of this whole situation. And I'm trying to give you, when you turn on ESPN, you turn on ABC News, you turn on Channel 11, you turn on wherever you're at, whatever your station is, you're watching Kobe right now on the news. I'm trying to give you, not what the news is saying, bringing up old clips of him and watching Kobe. I'm trying to give you what God says and what the Bible says, you know, because we have to look inside. We could hurt. But what does God want us to do? What actions does he want us to take now? And it would be to draw closer to him. And thank God for the life of Kobe Bryant. That we were able to, to enjoy him. And thank God that he's given us life and children maybe, friends, family that we're able to enjoy. But nothing's to become the idol. God is to be supreme. You know, so I would say the same thing as far as all these people who've passed on, these icons that we look to, Michael Jackson, Prince, Nipsey Hussle, you know, all these people with, with, with talent, you know, they're not meant to be supreme in our hearts. And I know in many of us, I know this could anger people, but many of us, those celebrities, those idols, those things, maybe our girlfriend, our wife, our kids are higher than the Lord higher than the Lord in our heart. We say we love God, but do we really? We say we're a Christian, but are we really? Is it only lip service? Only you know and only I know if we're giving lip service. So what God want us to learn through this is that uh, the Lord should reign on high in our hearts. That today we can make a new start 
And rather than just following the news and be led by whatever they're doing, let's do what God wants us to do. And the best thing we could do right now, I ask you to hold on, is let's say a prayer for the wife and the sisters that were left for Kobe and his daughter. Let's say a prayer for them. Let's say a prayer for the others in this helicopter. And you know what? If you're here listening, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, you're in the midst. He's in the middle. Christ is in the middle when we pray, when we come together. So if you're there and, and just bow your head, close your eyes, just take a second. If you're in the middle of all kinds of chaos, go to the other room. We're going to say a prayer for Kobe. And you know what? The Bible says if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And that he's there in the midst when two or three are gathered. You know, me and you listening to this, we're two. So let's say a prayer. Just bow your head, close your eyes, and I'm going to lead us in prayer. Father, we just come before you, Lord. And Lord, we got some shocking news today, Lord, that uh, Kobe, his daughter, and, and Lord, other people passed away in that helicopter crash. Lord, we Kobe Bryant was just somebody that uh, was just part of the fabric of our lives and our heart. We thought he was always going to be there. And Lord, to lose someone like that, it hurts us, Father. We live just kind of with the void. But we know, Father, that uh, you gave us Kobe to enjoy, to watch, but not to take the place of you, Lord. And forgive us, Lord, for letting the other things, whether it be Kobe, Nipsey, Prince, our wives, our daughters, anything, take the place of you, Lord. You're supposed to reign supreme. Lord, your word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. That you're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That if we put you first, your word said, that you would guide our life. And that Lord, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. Lord. So guide us, Father. Guide us and help us to get on track and forgive our sins as we continue praying, Lord. Wash us, Lord, that we be white as snow. Lord, that we come to you, Lord, with clean hands and we lift up the family of Kobe. Lord, uh, she lost his wife. They lost, she lost his, uh, lost her husband, lost her daughter. And Kobe's daughters, they lost their father and they lost their sister. And all these people in the helicopter, Lord, the other people, they're hurting just as much, but Kobe's the name we know. We pray over these families, Lord, that you would be with them and comfort them and that, Lord, you would be their comforter, Lord, because there's nothing we could say. We just ask that your presence would be upon them, Lord. Please touch Kobe's wife, Lord. Please draw near to her. Please be with the children and Kobe's uh, family, the other family too, of every uh, victim of this crash, Father God. Lord, we praise you that you know everything, why everything happens. We don't know, but one day we will know in heaven. So we lift up, we lift up Kobe's family, Father. We lift up his wife, his daughters, where they're going to have to go on without their father. But you will be their father, Lord God. You will be their father, Lord. I pray that the that Kobe's wife would seek you at this time. You would send people to comfort her. Lord, just uh, help the situation, Father. Lord, uh, I don't even know what to say, Lord, but the good thing is, is that you hear us. And you hear our hearts, Lord, even the, the prayers that we can't say, Lord. So we lift them up to you. Lord, um, we lift up the whole the whole families who were in that helicopter, Father God. Everyone grieving, Lord God, as Kobe was making such an impact in the world, Father. So, again, we thank you for Kobe. We thank you for him. And uh, we did enjoy him, Lord God. And you lent him to us for a little while. And, Lord, all these people today that were in that helicopter, everyone's hurting their families. So, Lord, comfort, Lord, comfort, please. And we know that you hear us because as we're praying, Lord, me and this person listening right now, we're coming together in agreement 
praying over their family, Father. So we lift them up to you. And Lord, we lift up ourselves to you, Lord. Lord, myself, I lift up myself. And I lift up, lift up to the people on the other end listening to this. That they, Lord, would be comforted, Lord. And forgive, forgive us if we've ever put any celebrity or anybody over you. Lord, we know that you love Kobe. We know that you love us. But Lord, help us to put everything in the right place, Lord. That we can learn through this that you're to be on the, on the throne, Lord God. So help us this day, Lord. Walk with us and Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Empower us. Give us a taste and a hunger for your word. Help us to walk with you daily, Lord God. Hourly, minute, every minute. May this be a new change. May we, may we rededicate our life to you now. Guide us to reading the Bible, Lord. Give us a desire and to lead us to a good church, as Father. So we lift this time to you, Lord, as the nation mourns, but specifically Southern California, and even more specifically the families, Lord. Comfort, Lord. We praise you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, you know, I just want to put things in perspective from biblically. Um, what does God desire to us to learn out of this? One, that he's in control. Two, that uh, he desires to be first. And he should be first. There should be nobody above him, not even no family. You know, we, the more we love God, the more we'll love our family. The more we love God, the more... He'll take care of the things that we worry about. We put him first, and all these things shall be added. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So, you know, just uh, a little encouragement, a little perspective changing, and hopefully today I know we come solemnly to this situation, but I just pray that something I said, like, clicked in, that the way we should be thinking, because if we just watch the news, we're going to be thinking just, Oh, memories, this and that. It's really not doing nothing, really, but enhancing their ratings right now. But I'd rather be learning what God wants us to learn out of this. And that's what I hope I brought to you today. If you feel led, please share this. And, uh, you know, we thank you. So with that, this is Paul. And I just want to say God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.